Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all-new Menace Forum NPB7. Now this is actually packing the most powerful mobile CPU that we've ever tested in a mini PC. This is coming in with 14 cores, 20 threads, up to a clock of 5 gigahertz. It's pretty amazing how much performance this CPU is putting out in a super small form factor here, and Menace Forum has done an amazing job with their cooling systems. This one's no different. This is their new Venus line, so uh, we do have kind of a new design here when it comes to their mini PCs. They also offer the NAB5 and the NAB6, which do have lower end CPUs. So just remember, this is the NPB7. We do have an aluminum chassis here around the sides, but the top and bottom are plastic, and we have that easily removable top so we can upgrade the M.2 SSD, 2.5 inch drive, and the RAM. If you're thinking about getting one of these inside of the box, obviously you'll get the mini PC. Also comes with a 120 watt power supply. We've got some hardware so we can add a 2.5 inch drive internally and a VESA mount. I.O. up front consists of two full-size USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports. We've also got USB Type-C, which is also 3.2, and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Moving around back, we get two more full-size USB 3.2 ports two full-size HDMI ports, we've also got dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, and two USB 4 ports here, and these are 40 gig ports, you can connect an eGPU to this device. So in total, without an eGPU connected, we can do four displays connected here, both of these HDMI ports, and both USB 4 ports. Taking a quick look at the internals, the top plate will house a 2.5 inch drive if you opt to add one. But one thing that Menace Forum has added to their newer mini PCs that utilize PCIe 4.0 NVMe drives is kind of a fan cooling system for the NVMe. It's a heatsink with a fan that plugs directly into the main board here. And you know, if you're running a faster drive, they do thermal throttle. So with a setup like this, you don't have to worry about that storage speed slowing down on you. And by the way, this does utilize DDR5. We've got 16 gigabytes running at 4,800 mega transfers per second. And of course, when it comes to the specs, this is using the brand new Raptor Lake Intel Core i7-13700H. 14 cores, 20 threads, and with this we get 6 performance cores up to 5 GHz and 8 efficiency cores up to 3.7. A lot of these mini PCs really do throttle that TDP, but with this it'll run it up to 90 watts so we can get the full performance out of that 13700H. This also has Intel Iris XE graphics with 96 execution units running at 1.5 GHz, and remember we've got DDR5 here. You can go up to 64 GB running at 4800 MHz running at 4,800 mega transfers per second, one PCIe 4.0 M.2 NVMe SSD. We can also add one 2.5 inch drive in the lid. It's got Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and it's running Windows 11 right out of the box. I've got everything updated, got a bunch of stuff installed that we're gonna be testing out, but uh, the first thing here is I wanted to check out the TDP on this uh, 13700H, and the way they've got it set up right now, it definitely puts the power down. Really impressed here. Give you a look, we do have dual channel DDR5 and the 96 execution unit Iris XE graphics. When it comes to the CPU, I'm seeing some incredible performance, and it really comes down to the way they have the TDP set up on this. Base of 45 watts. We can adjust this from the BIOS. We've got two power profiles. So we've got the base and we've also got the turbo. From the BIOS, it's actually set at 90 watts straight out of the box. I was a little impressed here. And from core temp, you'll see it jump up to 89, 90 watts. Now, of course, with these 13th gen Intel CPUs, be it mobile or desktop, they need a lot of extra power when compared to the older versions just to keep those clocks up. And just taking a look at overall desktop performance, we've really got a, a very, very snappy system here. If you want to do some web browsing, email checking, 4K video playback, uh, photo editing, and even light video editing, this 13700H offers more than enough CPU performance. And that uh, 96 execution unit Iris XE GPU paired up with that DDR5 RAM is more than enough for normal desktop usage. The next thing I wanted to take a look at was some 4K video playback. So we'll head over to YouTube and uh, we'll go with this one here. 4K HDR, make sure we're at 4K, stats for nerds, and we'll see what happens here. So 4K 60 FPS HDR 
On the initial load in, we had seven drop frames, but throughout this whole video here, no more drop frames are had. And this is kind of normal with basically any system that I've tested. I'd say 90% of the time, as soon as you hit play, you will have a few drop frames, but you know, throughout the video, you're gonna have very smooth playback. The next thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks. And uh, first up, we've got Geekbench 6, single core, 2320 multi 13,975. This is ridiculous for a mobile chip, but of course we are running this at up to 90 watts. Next up, we've got some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark. Wildlife gave us a score of 15,305. Night Raid 22,672. And finally, we've got Time Spy here with the 2125. It has fallen far behind the new RDNA 2 and RDNA 3i GPUs from AMD, but uh, with these newer graphics drivers, the ARC drivers, we're actually getting much higher scores than we did in the past with these XE graphics. And first up, we've got OG Skyrim, 1080p medium settings, running at a constant 60. With these newer Intel Arc drivers, I'm actually on a beta driver right now, I've seen a dramatic increase in performance, be it DirectX 11 and especially OpenGL games. And I completely understand that Skyrim is definitely an older game, but it doesn't stop a lot of people from still playing this, and it's one I always like to throw into my test, especially on these integrated graphics. Next on the list, we've got CSGO 1080p medium settings, and with this, I got an average of 98 FPS, and you'll see it go up to around 130 every once in a while, but uh, the best way to play this on integrated graphics is go ahead and lock it down at 60, but if you needed a little extra out of it, this could definitely do it. Really impressed here. GTA 5 1080p normal settings, we're getting an average of 91 FPS. So in the past, trying to run this on Intel XE graphics, it did struggle even at 900p, but uh, it does have a lot to do with their newer driver updates. Intel has really been pushing their Arc GPUs, and those Arc drivers go right along with these Iris XE graphics. I also wanted to throw a fighting game in here, so we've got Injustice 2, 1080p, medium settings. Again, in the past on older drivers with these XE graphics, we were only at around 900p medium settings, 60fps, but we can now take it up to 1080 without an issue. And the final game I wanted to test here was God of War, and even with those updated graphics drivers, we're still not going to be able to run this at 60 FPS. We're at 720p low, and we're only getting an average of around 42 FPS. Now, we've got more than enough CPU power here, but uh, you can see that our GPU is totally maxed out, and this only goes up to 1500 megahertz. So a game like this just really isn't going to cut it at 60 FPS. Now, if you did want to do this at low settings, 1080p, with some resolution scale at 30 FPS, you could, but not a lot of people want to play at 30 FPS. Another thing I always like to take a look at is total system power consumption, because this can be important to some people. You know, if you've got a high energy cost where you live, then you might want something that pulls a little less wattage. Through my testing, using a kilowatt meter from the wall, this is idling at around 12 watts. Average gaming, 53, and the maximum that I got it to pull was 109 watts. Remember, we've got that TDP set at 90 watts, and this is more of an extreme use case scenario. This is maxing out all 14 cores, 20 threads, and the built-in iGPU. You could always go into the BIOS and lower it down if you wanted to, but uh, you know, I wanted max performance out of this. And yeah, at full boat, it can pull a lot more than a lot of the other mini PCs on the market, but a lot of those other mini PCs don't offer the CPU performance that this thing does. Definitely a great little PC, and I'm really glad that they added USB 4 round back. That way you can connect an eGPU if you need a little more GPU performance, because as we know, when it comes to these Intel XE graphics, they are lacking a bit when compared to the newer Radeon RDNA 2 and RDNA 3 iGPUs. But if you're not into high-end gaming on these mini PCs and you're looking for more of a workhorse, then yeah, this is something I could highly recommend. And again, you could always connect an eGPU if you wanted to get down to it. 
But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you're interested in learning more about the Menace Forum NPB7, I'll leave some links in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this, just let me know down below. I wouldn't mind testing out an eGPU. I would have a lot to test there, and I would probably go with something like an RTX 3060 just to keep that cost down. So if that's something you're interested in seeing, make sure you let me know down below and it'd be really cool if you could hit that subscribe button and think about turning notifications on because I've got a lot more coming. And like always, thanks for watching.